Hey everyone, I'm Josh Jeffrey with Carolina Performance Training, and today we're talking about energy system training, and specifically how and why you should focus on developing the aerobic system. So we'll start by talking about uh, the ins and outs of the aerobic energy system and why that's important and why it's important for CrossFitters to focus on this system. Then we'll talk about the components that are maybe the limiting factors uh, for that energy system and how we, uh, how we can train those specifically. And we'll go into specific methods that I use with my athletes. So to start, what is the aerobic energy system? Well, it's our body's way of utilizing oxygen to produce ATP. It's responsible for a long-term energy production. So while our body has three primary energy systems that it uses at all times, they're all turned on, uh, depending on the intensity and the duration of the activity, one's gonna be more of uh, the primary source uh, for that energy creation. And that's uh, where the aerobic system comes in for that lower intensity, long duration activity. I think most people kind of have that idea, but one area that's not really thought of is how the aerobic system uh, interacts with the anaerobic system. So uh, the aerobic system is really important uh, for supporting anaerobic metabolism. So with anaerobic metabolism, we create these byproducts. A lot of them are actually not good. So uh, free hydrogen is one of those, and that decreases the pH, uh, the pH level, which is what that burning feeling is. And that also is an inhibitor of itself so it essentially causes you to slow down leading to fatigue so if we can better develop our aerobic system we can actually flush out and clear a lot of those byproducts and then restock and recharge that anaerobic metabolism so they interact really well so developing this aerobic system is really important for performance now for crossfitters a lot of times when i start with a new athlete this is the population that i work with the most they've never really done any long duration exercise. It's really 15 minutes max, and that's considered a long workout. Uh, and CrossFit seen as just this anaerobic sport. And when we think aerobic, a lot of times people think, oh, that's marathoners, that's triathletes, that's the endurance uh, community. But it's really important to develop this system for CrossFitters because CrossFit does use all of these energy systems to varying degrees. Uh, and uh, we know CrossFit is really a, a just repeated bouts of high intensity effort. And what did we just talk about? That aerobic system supports anaerobic metabolism. So it's going to support those repeated bouts, help us recover uh, more quickly between them, uh, and help us be able to sustain those bouts for a longer duration. Similarly, we can improve our anaerobic threshold through aerobic development. So when I say the term anaerobic threshold, I basically mean that, that time that where energy production, the majority of it, switches over from primary primarily aerobic processes to anaerobic processes. There's a time point where the majority switches over and that's considered your anaerobic threshold. Uh, if we can develop this aerobic energy system, we can actually push that threshold up. And that's really important for performance because now we can operate at a higher intensity aerobically, meaning we can put off the, the usage of an, those anaerobic systems and put off the accumulation of those byproducts. All right, so that will allow us to, again, increase performance. So that's a little bit about uh, the aerobic system. Again, a very, very brief introduction. But when we talk about the actual limiters, the areas of the system that we can focus on, there are really three. The first one is oxygen supply and delivery. So this is uh, the ability of our cardiovascular and cardiorespiratory systems to take in the oxygen and get that oxygen and blood to the working tissue. This is one area we can address. The second one is more oxygen uptake. So if we get that blood to the, that oxygenated blood to the working tissue, taking up the oxygen and utilizing it for energy production, and then third and finally is that substrate or enzyme availability. So those are essentially the three pillars of aerobic metabolism. Now we can train these things. We can, find, we can implement training protocols that focus on improving areas within these. Again, improving our uh, aerobic system and our ability to generate ATP aerobically. So when we talk about oxygen supply and delivery, uh, the big focus there is, of course, the heart and cardiac output. So we can address that in two ways. The first is uh, increasing the size of the left ventricle, the chamber of the heart that pumps blood to the rest of the body. So uh, you may be thinking, okay, increasing the heart, uh, the size of the heart, cardiac hypertrophy, that's usually associated with as a bad thing. 
Well, there are multiple types of cardiac hypertrophy. There's pathologic hyper hypertrophy, which is a thickening of the walls of the heart. That's not what we're shooting for with this. We actually be trying to increase the size of the chamber. And so we actually do this through some of these mechanisms. We increase stroke volume and that stroke volume, you know, the blood that is going into the, the chamber is gonna cause a stretching. And that eccentric stretching that the chamber undergoes as we push blood into that chamber actually results in a, you know, a increase in size of the chamber. And that's important. That's gonna allow us again to get more oxygenated blood to the working tissue. So that's one area we can address. Another one is actually the contractility of the heart, or basically how strong the heart can contract with each beat. Again, that's gonna allow us to get more oxygenated blood to the working tissue. So we can increase the size of the chamber and the strength of the contraction. So those are two areas we can improve. Additionally, with delivery and also uptake is this improvement in the vascular network. So it, it, we've got to be able to get that blood to the working tissue. And so this is where we're focusing on something called capillary density or the number of capillaries per unit of muscle. And that is, a, again, an area we can improve with structured aerobic training. So we're increasing, uh, uh, you know, making changes at the heart, making changes at the vascular network. But it doesn't do us any good if we can't utilize that oxygen at the working muscles themselves. So we've got to actually work on the muscles and those specific fibers themselves. You may already know this, but we're born with a predetermined ratio of type one to type two muscle fibers uh, within any given muscle. That we really can't do much about. That's genetically determined. But what we can do is alter the physical properties or the phenotype of those specific fibers. So we can make those type two fibers more oxidative. We can actually help them to better be able to utilize oxygen when they are trying to produce ATP. So that can occur through training. So we actually get a fiber type transitioning, not from two to one, but from a more glycolytic fiber, uh, type two fiber to a more oxidative type two fiber. Again, that's gonna allow us to focus on pushing up that anaerobic threshold because we'll be able to operate aerobically at higher intensities, again, prolonging the accumulation of those negative byproducts we talked about. So that's where we can really make impact on the muscles themselves. And then also the substrate, in, substrate and enzyme availability. Uh, so <laughs> substrates, when we're talking about that, we're basically talking about the, um, essentially the, the Pro, the components that we're going to need to be able to have these processes work. So when if we can actually increase the size of even those type 1 fibers, we think hypertrophy, we think mainly we're attacking type 2 fibers, we actually can address those type 1 fibers as well. We now have a bigger capacity. We have more substrate available. Additionally, this enzyme availability, uh, that has to do with uh, mitochondrial enzymes. So by through this type of training, we actually increase mitochondrial density or the number of mitochondria uh, per unit of muscle, which again, more mitochondria, it means a higher concentration of mitochondrial enzymes, which uh, mitochondria you may already know is kind of that aerobic powerhouse of the cell. That's gonna allow us again to better be able to utilize oxygen to produce ATP. And that's the whole point here is to be able to utilize that to the best of our abilities to again, prolong fatigue. So how are we going to do that? There are a bunch of different ways to do this. Just like any other type of training, there are a bunch of ways to skin the cat. But for me, I've got a few that I like to implement with my athletes, and that's what we're going to talk about. This first one, long, slow distance. It's been around forever. And you know, a lot of times it's forgotten about in the CrossFit community. And uh, I think that it's something that we need to maybe get back to. Uh, it, it's one of those things that if it's long and it's boring and you think you could go harder, you're probably doing it right. Uh, this is really important for specifically increasing the size of that heart chamber because you're increasing stroke volume and that's the good kind of cardi cardiac hypertrophy we talked about. It's going to be good for helping with the, that vascular network, developing that vascular network, increasing the number of capillaries. It's going to be really beneficial for increasing overall mitochondrial density. There are a lot of really important things with that long, slow distance. Now, with this type of training, it can't be 15 or 20 minutes. It's got to be 30 minutes or longer, up to maybe an hour, if not more. So for me, I'll start with some of my athletes, maybe at a half an hour of something easy, a bike, a row, a run, um, a swim. But it doesn't just have to be one modality. I also like things like around the world where you do one minute on the bike, one minute on the row, jump rope for a minute, one minute ski, 
do a carry, a heavy carry. You can mix, mi make mixed modal sessions here. And then I'm gonna progress that longer and longer, building up maybe a, you know, an hour's worth of volume for a CrossFit athlete. And then from there, I'm gonna maybe back down some of that duration and increase the intensity slightly, still operating aerobically. So you can progress these sessions uh, uh, you know, across any cycle. So long, slow distance, don't forget about it, it's important. This next part, this high intensity intervals, this is one part that I, I like to use mainly for adaptations at the heart itself. So when I mean high intensity intervals, I'm talking about heart rates that are near maximal. When we're doing long, slow dif distance, that heart rate should be pretty low. I'm, I'm thinking maybe 120 to 130 beats per minute. That is gonna vary based on the person, but it's pretty low. For this, I actually want maximal heart rate and it's a short duration interval. Maybe up to maybe a minute or two, nothing crazy long, and then I'm gonna rest and repeat. And what that's gonna focus on is that contractility of the heart, the strength of the, con of the contraction. But one other area that's actually gonna uh, affect is the mitochondrial density of the heart itself. So our heart is a muscle, it has its own blood supply, uh, and it is important to increase our mitochondrial number and therefore the enzyme concentration of the heart itself so that way the heart can operate aerobically. That's also another area that isn't really t talked about. So those hard intervals actually really play a role in development of the heart itself, which of course, cardiovascular system is hugely important when we're talking about that supply and delivery to the working tissue. So something like that, repeated intervals at a high intensity. Two more areas that I wanna talk about, threshold training. So when I talk about threshold training, I mean three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, somewhere in there at, at your anaerobic threshold or maybe slightly under that. And then I'm gonna rest and repeat. And the goal there again is to push that threshold up, all right? That is something that uh, I think CrossFitters love to do, but a lot of times we push too, too far past that. And being able to really learn where your threshold is and working at that threshold is gonna allow us to raise it, which again is gonna allow us to operate at a higher intensity aerobically, leading to better performance. So I do like mixing in some threshold training. Uh, with that, I usually start shorter duration there and then progress the duration longer. Um, again, just to ensure that the person can really you know, uh, be in the zone that I kind of want them to be so they're not pushing too hard there. That should be again right at or just under that threshold. And finally, the last thing I wanna talk about is actually a way to train uh, you know, a, an aerobic, aerobic adaptation with resistance training. So you might think that's kind of counterintuitive, it's not something to really think about, but resistance training with a high time under tension can actually be used to focus on those type one fibers specifically. Uh, when we talk about hypertrophy, as I mentioned before, we usually think hypertrophy of type two muscle fibers. But if I go at a high time under tension, specifically on both eccentric and concentric phases, so imagine a squat with two seconds down, two seconds up at a nice slow and steady tempo for 10 to 15 reps. We all know that that is going to be a, a brutal set there. Um, What's happening there is you're creating a hypoxic environment. Uh, that, again, is a time with, the, with that contraction that oxygen is not able to be you know, pushed in and utilized. So with that type of training, we can actually increase the, uh, the size and therefore the capacity of slow twitch fibers because they're gonna have to adapt. They're not getting the oxygen that being required to, uh, to function to make that, that happen. So I can actually create larger and uh, you know, larger slow twitch fibers and also therefore increasing their capacity through a resistance training component. So I'll actually implement slow, uh, slow reps at higher time under tension, again, 40 to maybe 70 seconds of work um, at that slow eccentric and slow concentric to target those slow twitch fibers specifically. Uh, so that way I can kind of uh, you know, address this aerobic system in all fashions, okay? Again, these are just a few options there, things that I do implement with my athletes themselves, uh, but you, there are plenty of other ones out there. And if you have further questions on this topic or any other topic regarding uh, programming or your own training, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find us at carolinaperformancetraining.com or Facebook Carolina Performance Training or Instagram handle is at CPT underscore strength.